Okay, so my name is uh, Charles. I'm Daniel. And my name is Joseph. And our project is uh, Fuel Cell Battery. Um, so just to give an introduction uh, and also a couple goals and specs that we have for, for this project. Uh, so why uh, fuel cell technology? Uh, so due to a growing concern in the uh, depletion of the petroleum base resources, there's been an increase in attention to a fuel cell technology. And uh, fuel cell technology, uh, one of the main reasons why is because uh, on average, it's about 80% efficient uh, from a scale of about zero to 100 degrees Celsius temperature range. Uh, and uh, it also, uh, byproduct is only uh, modern. Uh, so some of the goals that we do have for uh, for this quarter is uh, we're actually producing, uh, fabricating an electrolyzer, a uh, fuel cell, and also a test station for the uh, electrolyzer. Um, so our primary goal for this uh, project is to test the efficiency of a fuel cell under various conditions and also under accelerated uh, stress uh, testing. Um, so for our, for our objective is, is to be able to produce a self-sustaining system that could uh, that does not need any aid for from an external uh, energy source or power source. Uh, our goal so, uh, for next month is uh, just to optimize the setup that we are uh, producing this part. So just to give you a little bit more about our project and how it's uh, its components. Uh, it has three major components. It's a uh, solar panel. Uh, the job of the solar panel is to be able to take direct uh, sunlight and convert that into uh, energy uh, for uh, the electrolyzer. Uh, the electrolyzer, uh, so the electrolyzer is in uh, a device which uh, breaks up uh, the, the water molecules and separates them uh, into its you get pure hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Uh, it's a setup where there are two uh, electrodes uh, that are applied into a container full of water, and uh, the, since the oxygen is uh, negatively charged and the hydrogen is positively charged, the oxygen is attracted to the anode side and the hydrogen is attracted to the cathode side, which separates the two gases. Uh, that's pretty much the, the basic setup of the electrolysis process. So with the production of the hydrogen from the electrolyzer, uh, the fuel cell, the way it works, it's, co it's composed of uh, two end plates, uh, two current collectors, uh, bipolar plates, depending on how big you want to set. And between the bipolar plates, there's an MEA membrane uh, electrode assembly. Uh, the way this works is when it receives the hydrogen, uh, it, it's injected in through the anode side, and uh, it, it splits off into protons and uh, electrons at the MEA. The hydrogen ions go through the MEA into the cathode side, and electrons go around through an uh, exterior circuit and come back down to uh, the cathode side. From the cathode side, it, it, it uh, reacts with the oxygen and converts into uh, or forms water. So the design of, uh, that's uh, what we're designing for this quarter, we're trying to fabricate uh, everything to prepare for uh, to prepare for next quarter, basically we're trying to uh, do all the testing on next quarter and everything should be fabricated by the end of this quarter. Uh, we're we're kind of like uh, on top of uh, our plans, we're getting there. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're trying to build our uh, original ones rather than uh, buying everything and putting it together. We want to try our best to fabricate uh, an original, uh, either the electrolyzer or uh, or the fuel cell itself. So that's uh, that's what we're, we're heading toward actually. So uh, the whole system shouldn't be relying on any external uh, energy or power. Well, the team, uh, our, our team is uh, divided into two groups. Well, team A is uh, 
in, is the electrolyzer team, and Team B is the fuel salt team, basically. Uh, well, last quarter we had uh, two teams also. Uh, they did we did sell solar panel and electrolyzer. The this quarter uh, we have seven people working in uh, in Team A for the electrolyzer and five people in Team B for the fuel cell and me the team uh, team manager working with everyone on everything. The reason uh, we have more people on the electrolyzer is because uh, there is more to work on on the electrolyzer because we're trying to produce a test station and the electrolyzer itself. So that's why we assign more people to the electrolyzer team. Our uh, budgets and finances, uh, we have uh, about uh, $1,640 from the course material fees. Uh, some, some money rolled over from uh, previ the previous qu quarter, I believe. And we got $1,200 from Europe. And this, there is a list of uh, the stuff that we have uh, bought so far. The, everything that we've been buying so far is basically just, uh, just material, nothing that has been uh, prefabricated for us. So this material, we're working on and we're trying to build our own parts, our own designs. Uh, and uh, the cost of them, they're not significant so far. That's just because uh, the graphite plates has not been, uh, has not been added to this. The, 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 uh, probably the most expensive part would be graphite uh, plates, which has uh, the flow fields and, and the, for the fuels. Uh, so well, now we're gonna talk about uh, where we're at and the progress of our team. And uh, Joe is gonna continue. For so uh, part of the uh, electrolyzer, uh, some of the responsibilities that we have being on that team is that uh, we wanted to actually uh, set up our own test station uh, uh, that was modeled by the guy who did the CAD design. Uh, and uh, so so far we have he set up where we have a, a bubbler, the actual container, and uh, a uh, a hydrogen dryer uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, there there's also been uh, some of the people that were also put into our electrolyzer group uh, were uh, given the responsibility to create the solutions the the actual electrolytes to be put into the electrolyzer uh, because uh, some of the efficiencies uh, are dependent on the type of concentrations that you use and the types of uh, electrolytes that are used. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's some of the variables that we've had to narrow down to, to just have something significant be shown, and then we can try to optimize that design. Uh, for the other team, the Team B uh, is in charge of the fuel cell. Uh, we created a, uh, a flow field design for the bipolar plates, uh, which I will get more into detail in a couple slides. Uh, that's in the process of getting manufactured now. Uh, we're also uh, in the process right now of uh, testing a commercial one we have to get familiar with the test station that the professor has in his lab. Uh, and we're gonna do a procedures for that to make sure uh, when we do have our custom design to be able to test that. Uh, also, we're uh, waiting on the, on the material to produce our our custom hemp plate design. Uh, we're going to use scale like uh, material. Uh, it's very uh, uh, insulated to uh, electricity, so it's it's, it's a good cover up for the uh, current collector. So uh, the, the team environment we have like a we have like a weekly meetings, which every one of us actually uh, meet together and for like half an hour, 45 minutes normally, sometimes like an hour. We talk about uh, what we've accomplished, like uh, what, what's going wrong through, uh, through the process, uh, the, the, ta the task that the people are assigned to. And we also have like a, uh, like a, like a, like the, each, each individual team have, have their own meetings also to work on their own parts. And also we have like uh, lead meetings that basically that we, kind of like uh, spread out the test and uh, manage our test and be to make sure to we're, we're on top of it. Uh, well, communication is, uh, we're always available. Everyone can text us, phone calls, emails, like anything. We're always in reach, actually. Oh, 
awesome. Um, so we've uh, designated to have specific times. Uh, so we've uh, the leaders have set up a, a time frame where uh, each one is given a task to be performed. So they report to the team leaders in the lab, uh, plus the time is designated to actually go work in the actual fabrication lab. Uh, so uh, we've tried to work uh, with each other and try to communicate the best that we can so that we can accomplish our tasks. Uh, so that's basically the, the method that we've been using uh, in the past weeks. Uh, we, we show up to the uh, designated Wednesday meeting but, and uh, talk about the that Wednesday is uh, prior to the following Monday where where, we're, where we actually accomplish the tasks that were talked about the week before. Uh, so that's how we try to keep everybody structured and so we stay on track. Okay, so this is a little bit more in detail of uh, the design I was talking about, the bipolar plates. Uh, we did uh, some research and after some research we found an article that talked about two different uh, uh, designs for the uh, for the flow. Uh, there is a rectangular and there was a triangular. Uh, the rectangular uh, had an increase in, uh, not an increase, but it had a forms, uh, forming of uh, water droplets and uh, they're called uh, sludge, sludges and uh, there was also a, a decrease in the pressure. Uh, through the triangular uh, method there was uh, actually more of a consistent pressure and also uh, mass, trans ma uh, mass transfer uh, consistency. So we decided to go with triangular. The, the one on the under study for the research was a single serpentine uh, design. This is a, uh, a parallel, uh, it, it's two channel serpentine uh, design with the triangular method. So uh, the whole, the whole uh, this project was actually a learning process for us because uh, we started from basically zero, researching everything. Uh, well, some of the main, main things that we learned actually was like the, the more organized the team, the more will be done and it's, uh, it gets us through our goals much faster, more efficient also. So we had to restructure some of our, uh, the ways we used to do it and that happened like a while ago, everything is fixed, that's how uh, we were able to uh, caught up. The first few weeks so we, we started falling behind because I was like uh, I was new to leading so uh, so after we had uh, we started our meetings talking to my team leads then we started to organize any, everything and everything is caught up by now. Uh, some other uh, problems we ran into and uh, well, we learned from it, from them like uh, uh, like uh, fabricating the bipolar plates because they're made out of uh, Graphite, right? Uh, and graphite, we can't uh, we can't fabricate graphite uh, in school. We check with uh, all the possible places here. Uh, they don't work with graphite on campus. So uh, contacting uh, companies, the first one thing we we learned that to deal with companies, we have to have the non-disclosure agreement. Uh, otherwise, they kept rejecting our uh, emails and no one got, gave us any responses. Uh, we came up with some uh, prices. The prices were pretty high uh, from the companies. So uh, one of uh, our, our uh, the professor that we usually uh, talk to, he suggested another uh, way, which is like uh, molding. So that's what we're researching right now and trying to uh, find how that would work to to get our our uh, graphite plates uh, fabricated by ourselves. So questions. Questions?